All right, hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Um, so this is going to be part of the series of the tutorials for Unreal Engine 4, uh, based on all the stuff that I learned while working on Radial Impact. Um, so today we're going to show you how to basically get click events, like mouse click events, and then mobile touch events to fire correctly. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Uh, again, it's going to be very simple, very straightforward. Um, basically, we're going to go in, we're going to create, we have to make our own game mode and our own player controller to get that working correctly. And then we've got to put in an actor, into our scene, a blueprint actor, um, to respond to our events and our, you know, our tapping of like mobile and then the clicking of the mouse. So let me show you what we're doing here. We'll show you first the mouse click and then the preview. So here's our mouse. And every time we click on it, we get the word mouse click and the box itself moves up 10 units. And then it fades away in darkness forever, never to be seen again. But then, if we go over here, go under Play Options, and select Mobile Preview, you'll load up a mobile preview with the little thumb controllers right here. Like, where, where? And that's our player right there walking around. It's like, boy. <laughs> but if we click on it, we get Mobile Touch, and it also moves up 10 units. But I like seeing that circle guy running around. Whoa. Okay myself distracted there. So that's basically what we're doing. We're able to get those both events to fire independently from one another based on the preview we're going for. So for mobile preview we get the mobile touch and we still get the, the, the object to move up 10 units. But then when we go into our normal preview we get the mouse click events to fire. So let's go ahead and we're going to start this from scratch. Let me go ahead. Uh, let's make a new level. So an empty level. exit out of all this and uh, we're going to delete the blueprint for click touch force delete also get get rid of the game mode force delete and then the example player controller we're just going to delete that um, and then for a normal scene all we really need is just some geometry uh, you know, make this a fairly big arena, nothing too fantastic. And we'll also need a light. So let's go into lit mode. There's our light. And then we need to add a camera actor. So let's right click, place actor, go for camera actor. Just rotate that into place. Oops. Make sure it's moving straight ahead. And then upwards just a tad bit. And that's our basic scene setup. So what we're going to do now, uh, first let me save this level. I'm just going to name it toots underscore touch click. What we're going to do next, uh, we need to set up a game mode uh, and we need to set up a basic player controller. So we're first just going to set up a game mode. So let's go into con our content browser. Let's right click blueprint and there's an option right here for a parent class of game mode. That's what we want. Let's select that. I'm going to name this BP uh, touch click game mode. And then I'm going to just move that into our, my blueprint folder and then into our tutorial folder. So now we got it right here. And when we double click it, I see the only thing we have is the little billboard. Um, and then in defaults, we have you know a default phone class, we have a default uh, default HUD class, player controller class, spectator class, and game state class. A lot of stuff in here for game modes. So we're not going to focus on all of them. We're only going to focus on player controller class. Uh, that's what's going to actually get our events to fire correctly. So let's go back into our con content browser. Let's right click. Let's go to Blueprint, and there's our player controller. Going to name this BP Click Touch Player. Put that into my blueprints folder, then my tutorials folder. Let's double click on the player controller. So this is a camera, we don't really need to worry about that at all. We're going to go to the defaults. This is where we're actually going to check the settings to make sure both click events and touch events both work. So if you look over here under mouse interface, this is where everything takes place. So enable click events, obviously we want to check that, and then enable touch events. Obviously, we want to touch that as well. Um, if you ever want to have enable mouse over events, so if your mouse hovers over, you know something in, like over the object, that can fire. 
Or if you want to do the same thing, you know, enable touch over events. Same presses, pre premise, I should say, except it's with your finger, it's on a mobile device. Um, we're not going to focus on that. Um, we don't really need to. It's going to work the same way. Um, but one thing we want to make sure is this, the show mouse cur cursor. We want to make sure that's checked because sometimes you may lose your mouse cursor when you're clicking on things in the viewport. We want to make sure that it's visible. So we're going to make sure those three are checked. That's all we need to change. So let's compile and hit save. And then with the player controller selected in our content browser, let's go back into our game mode. And where it says player controller class, click that and find your BP and whatever you, you know, whatever you named your player controller. I named my BP, click touch player. So I set that, compile, and then save it. So we can exit out of that. Now let's make sure our game mode is selected. Let's go into our actual scene here. Let's go into world settings. And over here, game mode. We want to have a game mode override. So we're going to make it BP, click, uh, touch, click game mode. That's the one we named with our player controller in it. So we're going to save all of that. Now what we're going to do before we actually make the blueprint for the actor, that's we're going to click and touch. Uh, let's go into the actual level blueprint. We're just going to make sure we set the camera uh, so when we play the game, the, we're looking through the camera view. So to do that, honestly, we need to start with the be event begin play. So let's right click, type in event begin. And then let's go ahead with making sure our camera is selected in the level. Let's right click, and we're going to just add a reference to it. I believe, um, if you do, no, we would need to first get our player controller. So let's right click, type in player controller. Honestly, we want player index zero. I believe here we can do, if we type in the word blend, if we do view target with blend, we put in begin play. And then in the new view target, that's going to be our camera. Simple as that. So now, if we save and play, we're in the mobile view. Uh, we're not seeing much. Let me try playing in the viewport. There we go. There's our viewport. You can see everything okay. Not too sure why the mobile wasn't working. Let's try mobile preview again. Hmm. Okay, we'll worry about that in a minute. Um, so we got that working in the normal viewport. So what we're going to do now is make our actor uh, that will get clicked and touched and get those events to fire. So let's right click uh, in our content browser, do a blueprint, do an actor. The name is BP Touch Click Actor. Move him in to our appropriate folder. And then let's double click that guy. And I usually make my actors just a normal static mesh. I usually make them a cube. So selecting a cube in your content browser, let's add a component. Let's do static mesh. Let's name, name this guy touch click. Uh, change his size to 0.5 in all axes. Actually, before we do that, let's make our root. Uh, so let's make him a billboard. Let's do root. Because sometimes when you make your static mesh to a root, you can't change its size or anything. So remaking the root as a billboard and then or renaming this guy again to touch click. Let's make his size 0.5. And that's all we really need to do in terms of the components. But now let's go into his graph. Let's get a reference to this guy. Now let's also click on him. Let's right click now with him selected. Let's add an event. Input, let's do mouse input. We're going to do add on clicked. But we're also going to right click again. Um, making sure he's selected on the side here in your variables. Let's do add event, input, touch, add on, input, touch, begin. These are our two inputs. The first one's on click, that's the mouse click. The second one is the mobile, the touch. And if you're not too sure how I got this variable out there, if you just click on this guy and left click, drag him out, you'll get a get. And then if you right click, if you hold down alt and then left click, drag, you'll get a set. So with the get, Drag him out. We want to get his relative location. And then we want to move him up in the Z. So let's do add vector vector. And let's just do 10 in the Z. And then let's get another get from this guy. And then let's set relative location. Now let's 
plug them into the new location. And now what we're going to do, we're going to put two print events. So for the clicked one, we're going to do a print string. This guy's going to say mouse click. And for this guy, let's do a print string. Let's type in mobile touch. And then both these guys from the print string are going to go into the set relative location. So when we click on the player, well, the static mesh, the blueprint for the cube, when we click on them, it's going to say mouse click, and then he's going to shoot up 10 units and then continue doing that for each time we click. And then the same thing is going to happen when we're doing the mobile preview, except when we click, it's simulation it is the touch of like a finger on the mobile device, if it's a touch device. So we got that going. Let's compile. Let's save it. And then in the content browser, let's go back to that blueprint for the actor. And then in our scene, let's right click and add them in. So he's in our scene. Then let me go ahead and just build lighting real quick. Because that might be why we weren't seeing anything in the mobile preview. So we just build lighting. So now, let's go ahead. We're first going to play in just the selected view here. So now we see our mouse. And then if we click on him, we see the word mouse click. And then he moves up. And it's as simple as that. Now let's try this in mobile preview. And let's see if we can actually see anything first. Perfect. And then, you know, if we move this guy, we've got the circle running around per use. <laughs> but now, if we click on him, it says mobile touch. But he still, moves, he still moves up 10 units. So that's awesome. We got that working. So, that's basically it. Um, but, you know, just to do it, um, let's go ahead, let's go back into our player controller class. Uh, let's enable mouse over events. And let's do ooh, it's enable touch over events. We compile that and save it. And then in our in our scene here, I mean I'm sorry, in our blueprint for the touch actor, let's go ahead, let's select him again. Let's right click now. Let's add event, input, mouse, and then we're gonna do add on begin cursor over. And then we're gonna print string. Our string's going to say uh, mouse over. And then we're going to do the 10 units. Just got to plug that in. And then let's do the same thing for mobile. Let's right click with that, act, with that variable selected on our side. Let's add event, input, touch. And we're going to do add on input. I believe it's going to be enter. Let's print a string. Touch over. Type that. Oh my god, I can't spell. And then let's type them in into the relative location. So now let's try this again. I'm not too sure if this is going to work. Let's hope for it. Um, let's go back into our just a normal viewport. I hover my mouse over the box. It should say, you know, the print string, mouse over, and it should move up 10 units. And it's working. Awesome. And if we click it as well, it also works. So we know that's working. Let's try mobile preview now. Oh, kind of works. Okay. So how that one works is basically your finger needs to be already on it and you'll be able to hover over it. So we need to first left click on it. And now with it held down, the left mouse button, you can swiggle over it and it works. So that's pretty cool. I didn't even know that. So we got that working as well. Uh, so that'll be it for this tutorial, another pretty quick one for us. Um, so definitely like the video if you like the content, if it's something you were able to use. Um, also comment with more suggestions if you have any. Um, more stuff with Unreal Engine 4. Um, I know some of you guys are still working in UDK. I'm not really working in that anymore. But if you have any UDK questions, you know, Kismet, anything overall with UDK, definitely you know, comment asking about it. You can also email me. I try to do my best to keep up with that. 
Uh, but also share the video. Definitely like the video. Uh, and check out more. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely do subscribe. I definitely appreciate it when you guys do. Because um, we're getting there. We're pretty high in the subscription rate. I'm trying my best to get to a thousand subscriptions. So we're almost there. That doesn't hurt. Um, so thanks again, guys, for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Bye.